Hello everybody, this is session 8 of a new look at cancer. We're looking at different suppressor systems, normal program cell death. We talked about receptor site abnormalities. And now we're going to talk about vitamin D receptors. Now vitamin D in cancer is very important. Matter of fact, I believe it was about 4 years or 5 years ago now that the president of Harvard Medical School came out and said vitamin D is the number one drug for decreasing cancer. Uh, he called it a drug. That was his quote. And I would tend to agree with him. It's so, so very important. Um, it is a, it's a cell signal. It's a s receptor site um, stimulator of apoptosis. It decreases um, uh, cell growth and cell proliferation so it is just um, it is just a beautiful beautiful thing that God gave us so uh, vitamin D deficiency is um, something that we want to look at so first of all we'll just chat on that a second so most cancer patients have already had their vitamin D levels checked so normally, I remember years ago, normal vitamin D was considered below 50. And if you were over 70, you were considered to have too high of vitamin D levels. Even today, most doctors that you go to, if you have vitamin D levels over 80, you're going to they're going to you're going to be told that your vitamin D levels are too high. Matter of fact, there's multiple studies about vitamin D that talk about uh, I think I have a slide presentation on vitamin D and early dementia issues. And the studies reveal that if your vitamin D levels are below 75, uh, you have an increased risk. Matter of fact, the study, uh, the words that they used was a significantly increased risk in early cognitive decline symptoms. That means you have it significantly increased risk, risk in early dementia. So it is very essential that you follow the guidelines that you want a vitamin D level between 80 and 150. So there was uh, the fear of vitamin D being too high is that your vitamin D levels are going to be too high and it could cause kidney stones. There was one study that showed that back in the 1970s and that was since refuted by literally thousands of studies that showed that there was flaws in that study that that does not happen. It has never actually happened in clinical practice. So there's never ever been a case ever in literature of somebody with uh, with hypervitamin D issues causing issues. Yes, I believe you could have hypervitamin D issues if your vitamin D levels were in the 200s or something like that because you were taking a bottle of vitamin D every day. So there's, it is a possibility with anything, but in real life, that's just not what you need to be concerned about. So getting your vitamin D levels checked, we see in autoimmune patients that they're always low because an immune, an autoimmune response tends to just gobble up vitamin D levels. Vitamin D tends to be, in an, in an immune, autoimmune response, tends to be a modulator of the immune system. In a cancer response, tends to be a stimulator of apoptosis and a blocker of cell proliferation. So it's just a win-win-win all the way around. Where do you normally get vitamin D? Well, you get it from the sun, right? So you're out in the sun get a, getting vitamin D. Well, there's a couple of caveats here. So sun affects your skin. So number one, you have to have skin exposure in order to get vitamin D from the sun. But you have to have seven uh, dehydroxy cholesterol in your skin in order for the sun to convert the 7 dehydroxy cholesterol into 25 hydroxy vitamin D. So if you do not have adequate amount of cholesterol circulating in your bloodstream, then you're not going to make vitamin D in your sun, in your in your skin. Matter of fact, you're going to be more prone to burn. You're going to be more prone to having skin cancer. Matter of fact, there's arguments that, oh, I don't want to go out in the sun because I've had basal cell carcinoma and I don't want to... Uh, end up having skin cancer because my doctor said the sun causes skin cancer. Well, the sun can cause skin cancer if you allow the sun to burn your skin. So if you're out in the sun, you haven't been out in the sun a lot, and you end up with a burn, 
uh, then you're going to end up with skin cancer. Or if you have a decreased co concentration of cholesterol. Well, I thought cholesterol was bad. Isn't cholesterol bad? My doctor put me on Lipitor so I'd get my cholesterol. I'm so proud to have it down to 120. If your cholesterol is 120, it's too low. I want my patients to have cholesterol between 180 and 250. Cholesterol is the precursor to all your hormones. Cholesterol is not the bad guy. Even in arterial placking, it is not the cholesterol that's the bad guy. It is the inf inflammation in the intimal lining of the epithelial, endothelial cells that's causing a blister into the blood vessel, and cholesterol is trying to plaque it over to keep it from bursting. Cholesterol's the good guy. Regardless of what the pharmaceutical industry tells you, cholesterol is not the bad guy. Yes, you do. You want cholesterol levels over 350? No, you don't. Don't. But we want a cholesterol level that's a high enough concentration that it can produce your hormones. Actually, vitamin D is a hormone. So if you don't have adequate 7-dehydroxy cholesterol in your skin, usually because you're on Lipitor or some statin drug, you're not going to be able to produce vitamin D from your skin, and you're going to be more prone to skin cancer. So that's rule number one. You need adequate amounts of cholesterol in your body. There's just too many studies that show this. It's just not, it's not a theory anymore. So the use of sunscreens is also a bad thing. First of all, sunscreens have so many cancer-causing chemicals in it that it's just worthy of an entire presentation in itself. Do not use commercial sunscreens. There are some natural sunscreens that are out there that you can use. There's some recipes that we put in our presentation on sunscreen that you can use and make your own natural sunscreen if you'd like. Uh, so you need that vitamin D concentration, but you don't want to get burned from the sun. The problem is, is that I live in Minnesota, so there's no way I'm going to get enough vitamin D synthesis from my skin because I just don't go outside in the winter. If you go out and expose your skin in the winter in Minnesota, you're going to have worse problems than vitamin D production. You're going to be dead, frostbite. So just about everybody in the northern states is going to need to supplement with vitamin D. So what do we do and what do we supplement with vitamin D? You need a vitamin D3 that is in a oil. Now, most products that are out there, even at Walmart and Target, are, are, vitamin, are decent vitamin D products. So uh, you don't need my products, except you need the right dosage. There's, I've had patients bring in products that have a dosage of vitamin B of 400 IU. Well, you have to take so many of them to get up to your dosage that it's just cost prohibitive. And it's just not not realistic. They're watered down so that they're just not really good products. The one in the dropper bottle shown in this picture is one that I use probably more often than not. Each drop contains 2,000 IUs of vitamin D. So to get your 10,000 that you need in a day, you need five little drops, and it's completely tasteless. The bottle on the left here is a as a newer product that we carry, and it's 5,000 per capsule. So taking two of those is really easy to get your vitamin D level. So how much should I take? What's my dosage? Well, typically, a person that does not have cancer, in they're outside a lot in the summer, or they are in the southern states, taking 5,000 IUs a day is is usually plenty to keep your vitamin D levels up. But I do suggest you get your blood test because you can have some other vitamin D conversion defects that we're not going to get into in this presentation. So a person could be taking a lot of vitamin D and still don't have a very high blood concentration. Then we got to look at some other issues with possible uh, vitamin D conversion defects. <coughs> if it's in the winter, and you do have cancer, then you should be taking at least 10,000 IUs of vitamin D a day. Now, if you get your blood checked and you're at 85, then 
I would say in the winter still stay at 10,000. If your blood get if you check your blood and you're 135, then you could probably drop drop down to 5,000. But you want to keep it up there. Many of my patients come in and their vitamin D levels are in the 30s. Then I put them on 20,000 IU's for a period of time, maybe a week to a month, to get their vitamin D levels up, so that then we can drop them back down to 10,000. So this really boosts your immune system. This really stimulates an immune uh, modulation. So if a person has autoimmune issues too, a uh, higher dose vitamin D is definitely in the cards for them too. So next week we're going to talk about other things that we can do to boost our immune system. So if you're not on vitamin D, look at that. Get your blood, blood checked. Talk to your doctor if you're not our patient. And uh, this will be very helpful for you.